Yeah, you ready? All right, good morning, and uh, thank you for taking the time to be here today. I'm Ken Pimlott, uh, Chief Director of CAL FIRE. And uh, today we want to talk a little bit, obviously, about the fire activity that's uh, going on in the state. And uh, as we all know, wildland fires are nothing new to California, uh, but we've been talking about these drought conditions for really the last four years. And uh, everything that we've been talking about, everything that we've been talking to our communities about, about how dry the vegetation is, the potential for just explosively growing fires uh, is really all coming true. I think in the last, really since mid-July, we've seen fires throughout Northern California grow at really exponential rates. In some cases, you know, thousands of acres uh, in just an hour. Uh, we are over 1,500 fires ahead of the normal for this time of year. Uh, that's significant. Many of those fires we're not hearing about because the work that's being done by firefighters at all levels across California are putting those fires out uh, when they first start. But because of the conditions that we face and when we get temperatures over 100 degrees, uh, relative humidities that are extremely dry, some of those fires escape that initial attack. And that's what we've seen since really mid-July. And quite frankly, that's what we've seen in this last week with the fire in uh, Amador and Calaveras counties, the Butte fire, uh, and then this, uh, this tragic fire this weekend uh, in Lake County, uh, the Valley Fire. Uh, record rates of spread, over 10,000 acres on this Valley Fire in just a few hours. Uh, we're continuing to mobilize and move resources uh, around the state. There are really three large fires that we're concentrating on right now. The rough fire uh, in Fresno County uh, started out and has been primarily burning on the Sierra National Forest uh, in Fresno County and impacting parts of the Sequoia Kings National Park. That fire now is impacting some private lands uh, west and south of Hume Lake. And so the state and local government resources are working with our federal partners uh, to uh, work on suppression efforts there. Uh, but that's not the highest priority fire. Although it's over 138,000 acres, it, it doesn't have the threat to structures, lives, and property that these other two fires do. The Butte Fire in Amador and Calaveras County uh, this morning is over 71,000 acres. Uh, it is uh, about, uh, excuse me, is showing uh, about 30% containment this morning. As you saw from last week, uh, impacted the communities of McCullamy Hill, San Andreas, uh, and was burning this weekend towards the Highway 4 corridor uh, and potentially Angels Camp, Murphy's, and those communities along there. Uh, yesterday, uh, aircraft was able to fly that fire again because the smoke inversion had lifted, and they provided a significant number of aerial firefighting drops to support the firefighters on the ground and are cautiously optimistic that they're working towards uh, better containment. But again, you've seen the conditions we're burning in, and no one is willing to say that we have a handle on these fires until we truly do. So that fire continues to be a significant effort for the state and local government. Uh, it's really our second priority. Our first priority is uh, the Valley Fire, which started uh, mid-afternoon on Saturday in and around uh, Cobb Mountain. And we've have seen on the news and seen our firefighters from the um, uh, Boggs Mountain Hell Attack Copter 104 that were burned over literally within the first few minutes of that fire when it was just a few acres and uh, it, is, it grew at explosive rates uh, and again this morning uh, that fire is 61,000 acres and only showing about 5% containment. Significant impact to communities around Middletown, Cobb. There are communities now, for example, Cobb, that have almost been 100% decimated uh, by this fire. Extreme difficult challenges, hundreds of structures lost, and we really only have 5% containment because that fire has been burning in all directions. It's impacted uh, into now Sonoma County uh, and the geysers uh, that are there, and there's some impact to that area. So. Again, uh, this is fire season. These are all the conditions that we talked about. Uh, we are organizing, just like we've done for a long time in California, well practiced at moving resources. We've gone outside of California to get uh, additional 50 fire engines from other states. Our federal partners at the Forest Service are moving additional hand crews and fire engines in from the Pacific Northwest as those fires are starting to ramp down. They're bringing additional resources in. Uh, and that includes not just uh, aircraft, but uh, hand crews uh, and sorely needed fire engines. And so we've also gone to the state of Nevada for additional hand crews. And we've been working very closely as we always do with our California National Guard 
to get additional resources. We're deploying a, a third round of 12 hand crews uh, of soldiers from the California National Guard, which we're very proud of. Also additional helicopters and other resources in that support. And in addition, the mutual aid system working with our partners at the California Office of Emergency Services going very deep into all the local government fire departments around the state that are really providing significant resources to assist and work in these communities and, and in this firefight. Uh, so again, we don't see an end in fire season for the, the months to come. We're planning for that, we're in this for the long haul. Uh, we are continuing to use all of the resources at our disposal. Governor Brown provided some additional funding uh, just last week that we were able to bring on six additional uh, private helicopters that we are staffing and are all engaged uh, in this firefight, uh, as well as additional uh, firefighters. Last week, we started the process of bringing on some additional firefighters uh, to supplement what we already have, knowing we're gonna be in this for the long haul. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Director uh, Mark Gellarducci, California Office of Emergency Services. Thanks, Ken. Um, good morning. Um, first of all, let me just say, um, really our thoughts and prayers and hearts go out to the, those who have lost uh, their homes and have been displaced by these fire situations. Uh, we know that there have been a number of people in the case of the Valley Fire, we have uh, uh, roughly 13,000 uh, uh, individuals that have been displaced. Uh, up on the Butte Fire, we have uh, at least 10,000 that have been displaced. Um, uh, as Chief Pemlot said, these communities uh, still are in an active firefight, um, and we're working very closely with uh, CAL FIRE and the local uh, counties where these fires are taking place to try to get a adequate assessment on the total amount of loss. Uh, we know in both fires, both the Butte up in Calaveras and in the uh, Valley that, as, as the Chief said, we have a number of homes homes, commercial structures, ranches, et cetera, that are on the ground. We also know we've got a significant amount of infrastructure that has been damaged, uh, both water, power distribution uh, facilities, um, and as the chief mentioned, now the fire going into the uh, geothermal plants at the geysers. Um, our focus uh, at this point, um, uh, all the folks uh, here in the State Operations Center representing all the state agencies, the governor did declare a state of emergency for both uh, both fires and um, that activated uh, the, the State Operations Center to the highest level. Uh, all state agencies are here coordinating well, working with our partners um, uh, at the federal level, the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the U.S. Forest Service uh, to make sure that we've got all hands on deck and all resources that are necessary uh, to come in and support this. Um, our real focus now is to um, help those individuals that have had loss. We, we need to get, we, you know, the Red Cross has been great. We are supporting the Red Cross in, in, at the various shelters. We've got a lot of people in shelters right now. Um, uh, donation management has been fantastic. I want to thank the, the community at large and being able to provide resources. But also, you know, um, if you want to do something, um, you know, provide contributions if you contribute to the Red Cross uh, or your uh, your um, uh, favorite uh, charity that's working on the fires, uh, that's really going to be helpful uh, in the long run. Um, and then once we can um, uh, get a, a good assessment on the, the loss, uh, we'll work with the various insurance companies and the other entities to go in and uh, and start to get these people's uh, lives back in uh, in line and help the communities that have been impacted recover. Um, because of the case of in the in the case of the Valley Fire. Uh, We've got, uh, you know, as, as the chief said, Cobb, but even Middletown, uh, both the chief and I were on the ground yesterday. We were going through the damaged area. Uh, downtown is is really damaged um, and, and, and most of it is destroyed. And that's gonna be something that we're gonna have to work with the local officials to um, to help them uh, recover and get their, their, uh, their community back online again. Um, uh, Cooperation has been very good. Uh, these are fast moving, very dynamic situations. Um, and um, uh, as, as the chief didn't mention it, but you know, there, are, there have been uh, firefighter injuries. Um, we know that there have been um, um, injuries of uh, citizens and there's been some fatalities that we're still working through. Um, and so um, uh, this is sort of an ongoing situation as we move forward. Um, so at this point, let me uh, turn it over to our governor, um, Governor Brown to say a few comments, Governor. Well, <clears throat> California always faces fires, uh, year in, decade, uh, centuries, or centuries. So this is uh, one of the conditions uh, that exists 
living in California, and I came here to, uh, just to give my encouragement uh, to all the people who are doing uh, everything they can to coordinate and uh, combat these fires. But the fires, once they start going, uh, they become uh, very difficult to deal with and very expensive. And whether it's a, a local fire department or the state Cal Fire, uh, we are going to have to make available increasing amounts of money. And it is well to realize that government is about many things, but its fundamental obligation is public safety. Uh, public safety in terms of protecting people against fires and uh, disasters and, and also criminal activity. So uh, it's really back to the basics. Uh, these are serious fires. People have been killed. Uh, uh, hundreds of structures, more than that actually, have been destroyed. Uh, more to come. We don't predict because fire is uh, indeterminate. We don't know uh, what happened until it actually starts uh, starts burning and continuing. Uh, these fires do exceed uh, what the computer modeling has been saying. So again, we need our short term, which is to deal with the forests with preventative uh, fires. It's to build up our fire personnel and the equipment that is needed and be ready to pull in resources from all over. And of course, we need the uh, longer term goals uh, to try to uh, minimize uh, the buildup of, of drought and, uh, and global warming. Uh, that's a topic that uh, is very much in the news and very important. And unlike a fire that you can mobilize and react to, uh, this is something that builds up over decades and centuries. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can ignore it. And that's the reason why I've emphasized so much uh, for California uh, to deal with climate change as well as the immediacy of fires. Uh, this is a big challenge uh, because we have to deal with the immediate it's costing hundreds and hundreds of millions, and then we have to look and prepare a longer term, and we have to do so in a way that uh, joins together with other states and communities and countries all around the world. So uh, the southwest of America is one of the places that will experience more and more warming and dry conditions. And then when you add to that historic droughts that uh, are fairly regular, uh, you get exactly uh, what we're seeing, probably in small measure, and increasingly over the next few years and decades, uh, you'll see the same thing, only more exaggerated and more intense. So uh, I think we have a lot to be thankful for. It's a good team. So take any questions. <coughs> Great. Any questions? You mentioned that uh, it's how it's mobile, and I think you said you're still working through it, but if you can tell us what you know at this point, what you uh, what we know of, uh, is we have one uh, confirmed fatality uh, in um, on the uh, Valley Fire uh, outside of um, uh, the town of Middleton, and, and so that's what we know at this point. Um, there, the the area was um, is still very uh, active in fire, and so um, you know we're really not going to know for sure across the board until we can get in and do a, a, a more in-depth assessment. But can't do that until we the buildings get cooled down a little bit. No, we, we, we only have one confirmation, but we do have people who are unaccounted for. Uh, and then we are working with the sheriffs in both uh, counties uh, to adjudicate those those numbers and try to track individuals down and confirm those numbers. Any estimates on how many that, that is? Do not have that. On the number of unaccounted for, I'm sorry, following up on what you said, on the, on the number of unaccounted for, you don't have numbers on that either. That's correct. Uh, you want to talk about that? You know, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, quite simply and directly, no, they're not. And uh, these fires, as we've talked about, are extremely fast moving. The Butte Fire, uh, when it crossed the river from Amador County, crossed the McCullumy River into Calaveras, direct impacts to the communities of McCullumy Hill and the outlying communities. Uh, individuals, obviously, they want to protect their property. They want to stay with their livestock. Uh, we know folks were not heeding uh, evacuation orders to leave. And the challenge with that, firefighters are always going to protect lives and property first. So it diverts our firefighters to helping get these individuals out. We literally had law enforcement officers and firefighters going house to house as the flaming front was coming through, pulling people out and getting them to safety. We had individuals walking down streets after their homes had burned, after their cars had burned, and had no place to go and pulled them out because they waited too long. I can tell you when we were in Middleton yesterday, uh, there was evidence of all of that. There are cars burned out on the highway. They are uh, wrecked up against the side of banks. It's very clear that folks were waiting to the last minute, got scared, and then, and then 
and left. And so we really need everybody. Primary message is when uh, evacuation orders are given, please leave orderly and quickly. And quite frankly, don't wait until the orders are given. When you realize the situation is what it is, please pack up, follow your plan, and, and then move out of the community safely. Uh, we're approximately 4,500 uh, last year, and we're at about 6,000. And I can confirm exact numbers for, for everyone offline, if we will, but that's about the reference that we're at. And 1,500 is a significant increase over last year and the average. Are you finding that you have enough resources to fight these fires, or are there fewer options for you to call on? Well, certainly as we ra uh, ratchet up in the number of fires and the amount of resources that each of these fires take, it becomes more challenging to bring in resources. We are very well practiced at moving resources around the state. We do that all the time. That's why we very quickly uh, went to outside of California to get additional resources, why we've gone to the California National Guard very early for helicopters and hand crews. Uh, and it's again, we've put on additional resources uh, for two years in a row, additional firefighters and additional resources. Uh, but yes, Yes, resources get stretched thin. We are always planning for the next fire. We've got three major fires uh, burning right now. We also have over 250 fires a week that start that no one ever sees. So we've got resources across the state at the local government, federal and state level that are initial attacking those new fires. We've got to maintain that force. It's a constant balance, a constant process to move and anticipate where the next fire is coming from. Can you also address, you, I think you mentioned that Absolutely, Don. What happened on, uh, for example, the Rocky Fire uh, last month or two months ago, uh, we, we have computer models that plug in the vegetation type, the, the, the weather conditions, humidity, temperature, and the terrain, the steepness of the topography. And then we put a fire there and we see how it will burn under the various conditions as we change those parameters. Uh, our uh, fire uh, uh, predictive staff ran those models on the Rocky based on the actual conditions they had. They ran the models, uh, hundreds of times could not come up and replicate the same rapid extreme rate of spread that the fire actually uh, had or showed. It showed us that these fires are actually exceeding what our models will even predict. And I can tell you, whether you're a rookie firefighter uh, with your first year or you're a seasoned veteran, everyone is saying the same thing, have not seen fires spread and move in the way they're moving in this case. Any idea why the, the models aren't Quite frankly, I don't believe they were designed to take into the count of one, four years of extremely dry conditions in this state. The, the vegetation isn't recovering during the winter like it would normally do as it brings in moisture from the soil with rainfall. It's not getting there because we're not getting it. So every year, it's just getting drier and drier. Uh, we're seeing things change in the state. We're seeing that mean temperature, that average temperature come up. And fire seasons are getting longer because the conditions uh, are conducive in a longer time period. Period. So all of that is contributing uh, to a base of vegetation that is just way beyond what the models ever were really designed uh, to predict. What's the impact on the geothermal uh, facilities? We're, we're currently assessing that. Uh, it looks like there was damage to the, the cooling towers, and, and those are wooden, uh, the way they're designed, and then some of the other actual plants themselves. And so we're still working. Uh, again, fire is very active, so it's been a challenge uh, to get into many of these areas, but there certainly were, was damage to both the, uh, the cooling towers and some of the plants themselves. Governor, in the um, recent legislative session, there were some climate bills that you supported that either didn't go through or were modified. Talk about that a little bit and put it in perspective of these fires. What are your thoughts? Are those things all related? Well, um, look, there, there's been fires in California from time immemorial. We know that. Uh, but we also know that the temperatures uh, are rising. The annual mean temperature is going up. And that then, when combined with years of drought, means that the conditions are, are worse. They're drier. And therefore, these fires are acting more aggressively, more unpredictably. So we have to do something about it. A lot of what you have to do is fight the fire, is have the equipment, uh, invest the money. Uh, you also have to do preventative work uh, during the year. And there's some air pollution issues about uh, starting uh, controlled uh, fires that are very important. We have to work through those. But longer term, uh, the, the climate is changing. 
and that means the weather is going to be hotter and, and more unpredictable. So we have to do something about it. But when we talk about something uh, as global uh, and, and as uh, slow moving as climate change, it doesn't fit in with either the news cycle or the political cycle. This is a longer term uh, challenge, which California has definitely been respond responding to in a very creative way. Uh, some of these bills, I have to say, the uh, SB 350 was incredible uh, what it's doing in terms of energy efficiency and the 50% goal, uh, which is very real. And California, unlike any other state, has the technical capacity to meet that 50% renewable energy. Now, when the third element, uh, petroleum, uh, that that's something that has to be reduced over time. Now, how we do that, that is a, a very complicated set of, uh, of initiatives that need to be taken uh, from now on, going forward. We have a goal for 15 years from now. The Air Resources Board uh, will be setting forth how we're going to get there. So they'll be what they call, uh, they'll be doing a scoping um, a set of workshops and people will come in and they will argue and talk and in the best way we can. What the bill merely said was that which is our goal, which I laid out in my inauguration, uh, let's put it into uh, statute, but there was nothing in that particular statutory provision that indicated how we're going to get to that goal. Th that is the work of the Air Resources Board and the legislature going forward. So uh, we haven't missed a beat. Uh, climate change is real. Now we have a whole uh, political party that denies that. That is a real challenge to California, uh, to the country, and to the world. That's why uh, I'm working on this. And you ought to see it not in terms of me. I'm just, uh, you know, part of the flots and jetsam of history. I'll be gone soon enough. But climate change is not going. Uh, it's going to be around even after the, your newspapers are long forgotten. So it, it, this is a matter of, of, of deep uh, personal and general significance that everyone ought to be thinking about how they can best respond. We know from the science that the Southwest uh, will warm, that the climate is changing, and it's going to exacerbate and, and intensify uh, the uh, occurrence of forest fires. There's no doubt about that. Now, the exact uh, chemical interaction uh, for every day and every fire, that's something that will be argued about and scientists will continue to research. But we know with certainty, um, with great confidence, that we got to deal with the climate change. That's why I've made such a big thing about it. And uh, it's not going to stop with me. Because I wish it were if it were just about me, then it would be a very trivial problem. But it's really about you. And it's about your children, and it's about the future of how our, our society is going to function. And what we're seeing in Europe now with mass migrations, that will happen in California. As the uh, Central America and Mexico, as they warm, people are going to get on the move. And it's, it's a real challenge. We have a chance to uh, minimize this significantly, but it takes real commitment and it's not business as usual. And there are a lot of uh, companies and people and ideas that say, well, this can't be. We don't believe it. Well, I think the science indicates uh, what we have to do and as far along as I'm around, I'm gonna keep pushing it. But I don't think the fact that they took the oil out, that didn't alter any of the legal framework of California. It just said uh, the legislature is not ready yet to uh, memorialize the goal uh, that I've set forth and I think uh, is well contained within AB 32. Yeah, what? Well, why don't we just let it follow? I just wonder, it's not often that we see you have a legislative, if you want to call it defeat. You, you usually get what you want. So thinking about that, what are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts on that, since I have been watching governors come and go since Earl Warren days, uh, the idea that a governor always gets everything that the governor requests is, is silly. And to try to uh, make that as a, some kind of unusual event when a bill is, is defeated. I mean, this is a bill that uh, you know came out of the legislature, came out of the Senate, and we certainly backed it because we, we, it's definitely in the right direction. And people who voted against it are gonna have to vote for it or the next legislature or a few years after that. Uh, there's no doubt 
we have to decarbonize our modern economy. That's true. And uh, take, uh, pr quite frankly, I think uh, the good out of this is we have drawn the battle lines, we have sharpened the, the, what the debate is, because there's still vast numbers of, of officials who just say this isn't true. Well, I, th this will at least smoke them out, and uh, as I said, people are gonna focus on it. But I, I would suspect that not everything I want, I'm gonna get. That's never been my experience as governor or as attorney general or in life. Uh, and I don't think it's your experience. All your newspapers have certain circulation goals and you miss them all uh, many times. So this is part of the narrative. Uh, but uh, one thing about these conditions, fires are not political. Climate change is not political. It's real and I believe we all have to do whatever we can to respond appropriately. I just yes. Want to ask you about the fires, Governor. You've no doubt taken in some of the coverage from your, your officials over the weekend. You've yeah. seen what's happened. Two entire towns virtually wiped off the California map over the last two yes. years. Can you just talk a little bit about what has struck you in listening to the reports from the front lines? What you have noticed? Well, I did talk to a couple of firefighters this morning, and they said this thing, uh, they had never seen anything like this before. Both these firefighters have been doing f firefighting for seven years, and uh, yeah, they definitely were caught by surprise. They, they didn't think the fire was, was dangerous from where they were, and then all of a sudden it was. So this is damn serious stuff. Uh, firefighters have to be careful, but so do people who live out in their cabins or their homes. They have to leave uh, when they get the word. And this is not just this year. This is the future from now on. It's going to get worse uh, just by the nature of, of how the climate's changing. In Oakland, uh, we lost thousands of homes. And uh, I happen to live in a, in a zone. I live in a fire zone, a slide zone, and a couple miles from the Hayward Fall. So. I often like to spend time in Sacramento. <laughs> 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 with, the, uh, with, with regards to the fire, uh, the budget um, that's been set aside yeah. for just this reason, yeah. uh, are you concerned about that at all? Is there, is there you know, any outlook having to go to the rainy day fund, that type of thing? Uh, well, I am concerned because the desire for uh, government intervention is almost endless. And in that uh, exfoliation, exfoliation of government spending and activity, we can sometimes lose sight of the basics. And the basics are public safety and, and water and, and the, the basic infrastructure of roads and the distribution of food. We have to make sure we stick to the basics and be uh, um, a little slower to be invested in, in things that are good and that are nice uh, but we have to stick it to the fundamentals, and that's certainly fighting fires, and we will have enough money in this budget, we'll be able to find it. We're not gonna have to dip into the rainy day fund, so at least not this year. We've okay. gotta move to your last question. Emotionally, how does this take a toll on you watching what's happening to your people going through this situation? Well, when you hear the firefighters themselves, you, you can imagine yourself being in that position. It's very, uh, I mean, it, it's obviously, it's scary stuff, and it takes a lot of courage, and these fires will take lives, and they will cause injuries, and we have to do the best we can, because we are really uh, in a battle with nature, that uh, nature is more powerful than we are. And Chief, are, are there any uh, word on the investigations uh, leading to the last two fires that started? We know the, the one in Kings Canyon, that was a uh, lightning. Correct. No, the, all of these fires, other than the ones that were caused by lightning, are all under investigation. Obviously, as you can imagine, uh, we are very uh, protect, protective of the investigation so they can get a good handle on all of the indicators and uh, come back to us with that cause. So all of these are currently uh, under investigation. And, and Director, if I could ask just one down here on the, uh, the uh, missing alert. How do we know who's unaccounted for? Are there not very Uh, <clears throat> so we don't have an estimate on that yet. The, the sheriffs in the various counties are working through um, um, their their process. Um, they know their communities well, and uh, it's sometimes if there's cities in the counties, uh, they're working with their city police departments uh, to to get through those those uh, that amount of data. So um, uh, in these type of conditions, you know, um, in, in the where the fires have taken place, uh, some people may be on, out on vacation. They may not have been there. There's just a lot of reasons why people may not. Be
be accounted for, um, but we don't have a, a, an accurate number on that quite yet. Emergency fire yeah. officials will be here to answer specific questions. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.